Hey you, it's Aurea, and today we're looking at resin papers. This is something I've been wanting to share for a while because it's so much fun to use these in your scrapbooks, your junk journals, your art journals, and just, I don't know, I'm loaded with ideas right now. And I did these Sumanagashi papers, this session uh, part five and part six, I can put those down in the comments, but it just really got me excited to think about what would happen if I put resin on these? Will they turn translucent? And of course they did, and it's just super fun. I'm really excited to share this with you. My, my mind is spinning with ideas, like I said. I'm gonna throw in some of those dark dyed papers I did a way back, that'll be in there. Some collage sheets that are in my newsletter so if you signed up for that you might have some things in your inbox and mostly just these sumanagashi pieces they just really excite me and i can't wait to like put them into an art journal or a junk journal and see where they go if you're ready i'm ready we're just gonna sit back and watch me get going on this hopefully not get my hands too sticky but i'm gonna walk you through it so let's get going so you're gonna need some resin, basically. Mine in Italy, I have this Art Pro resin, but usually it comes in two parts. I've labeled mine at the top so I don't mix them up. So I always know I'm working with A and I always know that I'm working with B because one is kind of a base and the other one is a hardener. And you're going to have to read the instructions. Usually it's a ratio between the two and it's not necessarily 50-50. For me, it's uh, 100 parts of the A, 100 parts of the B. You're also going to need some good gloves because this stuff gets sticky and I, I've gotten it on everything before. So I'm really kind of religious about wearing my gloves. I use a, an alcohol, a very high percentage of alcohol to wipe it off. I also have a stir stick by me at all times, especially for the initial stirring of the two portions. You're going to need a scale. You're also going to need a garbage bag to put your papers on, a very heavyweight garbage bag or a non-stick kind of plastic surface. I have something like that underneath. And I've chosen a bunch of papers from my Sumanagashi sessions because I just really wanna see how these turn out and how the resin is gonna react and make them kind of translucent, transparent. And there's just a variety of here of photocopy paper, coffee filters, tea bags, things that we tea stained and whatnot. So anyway, there's an assortment. You can use very lightweight papers such as these, and as well as a hard, like the hardest I would go is probably a copy paper. This is a photocopy paper that I did Sumanagashi on. I wouldn't go much harder than that. You're really not gonna be able to achieve that translucent effect. These coffee filters should work well. I've done them before. And again, just lightweight paper is what you're gonna need. I will say a tip is straight away, think about working quickly. So make sure you have everything ready to go, your papers, your workspace, and where they're gonna dry ahead of time, just all prepped, because it does get thicker and harder to work with as time goes on. You have about a 30 minute window where it's not gloppy. I put this on a little bit gloppy. You can see here it's thick. And it's thinner when it starts, and it is called hardener. It does harden with time. So it, there's a little pressure there to have everything ready to go so you can just work with it when it's at its best consistency. So I'm just starting off by pouring in 100 grams because it is a question of weight, not volume. Looking at my scale, and then I'm doing about 60 grams of the hardener mixing it for two minutes as the instructions require me to do and slowly turning it. And then I just start by spreading it on very light layers. I have a little sponge brush that I'm using and lightly putting the layers on and you can almost see it get activated almost instantly. And I just take some time to turn it over making sure that it's smooth and evenly spread because as you saw in those earlier examples, it can get a little goopy if you're not careful. I'm gonna work quickly here and put on some layers and just keep going, making sure that I always have places and space to put these. That's the big challenge for me was just 
doing this in a place and organizing everything beforehand and making sure I would have space for these. Literally, I have like 50 papers that I'm doing here. So that's kind of the challenge. Also making sure you're in a well-ventilated space because you do, it is, a, I would say, slightly toxic to breathe, bring, breathing this in. And you're going to be a little, need to be a little careful of that. If you can do it outside, even better. But I'm doing it on a warm day so I can have the windows open. And that really seems to help. And so I'm just going to continue. I have some light uh, Japanese rice paper in front of me, some tissue paper, carefully pulling them up. They, they're pretty stable. They don't tear too easily. And putting them aside, this is a copy paper that I mentioned before, soaking again, an old book page that was tea stained and just using a variety of papers. Some of them will have more of a translucent effect. Others will be a little bit more opaque, but that's fine. The tea bags I really like because those just become just totally transparent. And it's just so fun to see like these sumanagashi prints stand out. This piece was dyed by black beans. I had a session on natural dyeing of these papers before I would sumanagashi them and they made very pretty blues and just to see if this is going to hold up with the resin we'll see it usually tends to really lighten it but it still has a little bit of that blue essence to it and i know that i dyed it myself and it's just kind of irregular and it creates a really pretty quality one of my other loves is vintage paper and ephemera and I've been spending some time making these collage sheets, which I've been sending out my newsletters. I hope you're getting those. Um, they have a lot of potential. I'll be sending out one to add on with this video. And you can, I just think it'd be fun to cut up and put into an art journal or a junk journal. Some of them have more neutral tones and others are going to be brighter and have more pop, but they're all just taken from old magazines that I have, a few images that I found online that are copyright free, so we don't have to worry about that, but mostly images I've found in old magazines and I don't know, just they have a lot of potential to add that extra kind of pop to your project. And I just want to see how they're going to look. So this is kind of exciting to me to see, like, are they going to be super translucent? Are they going to be transparent? Where they, what kind of quality are they going to have? obsessed for a good many years with Indian block prints and I've put some of those in here as well because I just I think they're just gorgeous so we'll see we'll see how this turns out we're gonna just keep plugging away here and adding in more different papers I have this vintage music paper sheets I did in another dye bath this was an avocado dye and I just love those warm, peachy, rusty tones you get from those pits. It's always just blows my mind that an avocado can make these colors. And I'll be sure to put that down in the description as well, where you can find this these dye bath recipes and this tutorial that I threw together. It's just basically avocado and sodium carbonate. And man, lovely stuff. It's got a lot of potential for those papers too. So highly recommend you giving that a shot. So I'm gonna just keep going as I do. I go down the rabbit hole, I keep, I just can't stop usually. So I always have a good stack of papers, lots of Japanese influence and patterns. And we'll see, we will see where these go. And I just can't wait for them to dry so I can check them out set them aside here and let them dry for a day or two. Depending on your weather, the heat, the humidity, you will probably need a day or two before they are ready to peel off of the garbage bags or the non-stick surfaces you have them on. So, and I'm just jumping in in it because they're ready to go. I've let them dry and I can just, I'm just loving this. Like. I, I just see so much potential. These would be amazing for so many different projects. And I'm loving seeing this sumanagashi pattern come through this transparent thing. And it's so durable now. It's got a different quality to it. The coffee filters are, have a lot of potential as well. And I'll be sharing a project with that. And I love how the colors 
remain. They didn't bleed. They didn't rub off. They just kind of soaked through and allowed me to have this kind of transparent thing happening. So cool. So exciting. So I'm going to just keep ripping these off, slowly tearing them off. I would recommend if they feel still kind of sticky to the touch, don't just let them rest for another day. I've made the mistake of trying to peel them off when they're still a bit tacky and they will rip. They do need to be a bit hard before you completely tear them off. So I'm just going to keep going, make my stack, make my pile of resin papers and take a look at how these came out. And these are the collage sheets that I made. I've noticed that some of them are a bit shiny for my taste. So I am going to look at a solution for that. There will be a side that might be a little bit shinier, another side that might be a little bit more matte. Um, and depending on your taste, you might want to fool around with modifying them a little bit afterwards. And I'm going to do that here in a second. liking this one it came out so transparent it's a it was kind of a wax paper uh, drawer liner and this collage sheet is really nice too with a lot of potential these vintage prints this one had a little bit of saran wrap I put over the top to see if it would stop it from being too glossy but what it did it just kind of made a pattern over the top and so I'm going to try and make these a little bit more matte by adding some matte gesso that I have here and some acrylic paint. I'm just making a little mixture of the two so it becomes more opaque on the top. I'm not totally thrilled about this kind of glossy look. So I'm thinking if I put some opaque gel medium, maybe rub in some acrylic paint, I might be able to tone it down a bit so it's just not so in your face. This is plastic. Um, and that kind of works. It's kind of using some rusty sepia tones in with the matte acrylic medium and looking at it I like I kind of even like the texture I mean I like it and I'm at least I'm liking it a lot better than that super shiny acrylic look so I know I'm going in the right direction here getting these covered with this opaque matte medium it is helping I'm feeling it's a little bit more in line with my taste than that whole full-on plastic look so that was successful, I think, in terms of toning these down a bit. So there you go. We just went through the tutorial. It's pretty easy. You need your acrylic uh, resin and you need some space and you need a lot of papers because once you get going, much like jelly printing or anything else, you really don't want to stop once you see the potential these have and you get curious just to see what what will happen to these papers. So choose quite a few before you get going on your project. That's all I got to say. I have to say thank you for being here and joining me and watching this session. I hope you got something out of it. If you're interested in Sumanagashi, be sure to check out my other videos. Again, I'll list those down in the, in the description. And I hope I see you back here next time. I'd love to see you and I'll be sharing more with you soon.